How would it feel to live in a place where you're never allowed to be alone with a woman? Let's explore the hidden side of Laos. While many people are aware of the conflict between the United States and Vietnam, fewer know that Laos was the site of America's covert operations during that era. This often overlooked part of history involved a nine-year military campaign led by the CIA, where the United States conducted secret bombings without informing Congress. This operation became known as the Secret War. Between 1964 and 1973, the United States dropped approximately two and a half million tons of explosives in Laos, making it the most bombed country in history on a per capita basis. The bombings aimed to assist the Royal Lao government in disrupting traffic along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. The bombs fell like rain, destroying entire villages and rendering farms and fields useless. Thousands of innocent villagers lost their lives, and those who survived were left with lifelong trauma. Many were forced to flee, with a significant number resettling in the United States as refugees. The impact of America's secret war extended beyond traumatized refugees. The millions of bombs dropped in Laos didn't all detonate, leaving over 80 million unexploded ordnance, or UXO, behind. For years, the people of Laos lived with hidden dangers lurking in their backyards. Since the conclusion of the secret war, an additional 20,000 civilians have died from these unexploded bombs. In 2024 alone, 21 casualties have been reported, with 40% of the victims being children. UXO not only poses a threat to life, but also renders the land barren and unusable in the long term. It took the United States 31 years after the first bomb was dropped to acknowledge the issue and begin demining efforts. Many Lao people are now entering the demining field, using metal detectors to clear UXO from their lands. They can sell the scrap metal to local vendors, who melt it down to create innovative products. Despite these efforts, only 10% of the contaminated land in Laos has been cleared, leaving millions of UXOs behind, and many continue to be injured or killed each year. If you ever visit Laos, there's an important cultural guideline to keep in mind. Never be alone with a Lao woman unless you're married to her. Laos has distinct customs regarding courtship and dating, which includes a conservative approach to physical relationships. While Lao women may be flirtatious, it's essential to respect the local laws and traditions. In Laos, it is illegal for unmarried individuals to engage in physical relations. Hotels typically check identification when you book a room, and if authorities find you alone with someone of the opposite sex, you could face penalties. For a Lao woman to be with a non-Lao man, they must first obtain permission from local Lao authorities, and the man must pay a dowry to the woman's family. If this rule is not followed, you could face fines starting at $500. This regulation also applies to non-Lao women involved with Lao men and to same-sex couples. While a romance with a foreigner may seem appealing, be cautious of the potential complications. Additionally, many Lao girls are married off at a young age, with child marriages being prevalent in the country. Approximately one-third of Lao girls marry before they turn 18, and 7% are married before the age of 15. This trend can be attributed to the legal marriage age being set at just 15. Consequently, in many rural areas, girls are often considered mature enough for marriage by the age of 14. Most of these young brides come from impoverished families in rural regions, where financial hardship leads parents to marry off their daughters. Education for girls is not prioritized within Lao family values, as boys are seen as the inheritors of family property, while girls typically leave home to marry. For many families, marriage is viewed as a way to ensure economic stability and security. Once married, girls often become responsible for domestic duties within their husband's family, and the bride's family receives a dowry in compensation. In certain communities, harmful traditional practices like chubni and chubzaji exist, where families may force daughters into marriage in exchange for money. In response to these issues, the Laotian government has committed to ending child and forced marriages by 2030 and has raised the legal marriage age to 18 to align with international conventions. 
They have also established a hotline for brides to report forced marriages or emergencies. While Laos is home to many beautiful women, it's essential to be aware of these realities. Foreigners face significant challenges when trying to marry or date a Lao woman. The government enforces strict regulations on marriages between Lao citizens and foreigners, as Lao girls are particularly vulnerable to love scams. Many foreigners quickly marry Lao women to bring them abroad, only to subject them to exploitative situations without their prior knowledge. Due to this, the government has introduced new regulations to protect its women. Under these rules, Foreigners wishing to marry a Lao sweetheart must reside in Laos for at least three consecutive months and provide various personal documents for a background check. Once that's completed, they can apply for a marriage certificate, which will take at least three months to process. If the Lao government finds the applicant untrustworthy, the marriage may be delayed or even denied altogether. Failing to comply with Laos marriage laws regarding foreigners and Lao citizens can lead to the foreigner being deported and barred from re-entering the country. Laos is a conservative nation with a predominantly Buddhist population. Public displays of affection, such as hugging or kissing in public, are generally frowned upon. People in Laos tend to be less expressive with their friends and romantic partners. While friends may hug, couples are expected to keep their displays of affection private. Holding hands is acceptable for couples, but anything more intimate is considered inappropriate. In addition to PDA, the local population dresses modestly, typically avoiding showing skin above the elbows or mid-calf. Foreigners can wear shorter clothing, but overly revealing outfits may attract negative attention from locals. The key is to respect cultural boundaries. Lao people approach human interactions with a gentle demeanor, so it's important to maintain a calm and non-aggressive attitude. Have you ever heard of the charming village of Bang Bieng, nestled in the jungle? It's a popular yet dangerous destination where many tourists have tragically lost their lives. Once a peaceful rural area, it has become a must-visit spot, particularly for young backpackers. The trend began in the 1990s when tubing down the Namsong River, a favorite local pastime involving tractor tire inner tubes, gained international popularity. Now, Numerous wooden bars line the riverbanks, drawing in tourists with promises of parties, music, alcohol, giant water slides, and rope swings. Tourists can easily find happy pizzas and magic shakes containing various substances. The mix of young visitors, alcohol, and drugs has led to serious accidents. The local hospital treats at least 10 backpackers daily for injuries such as broken bones or infected wounds. Some have even lost their lives. For instance, an Australian tourist fatally injured himself after a dangerous fall. Reports indicate that about 20 people die each year due to tubing-related accidents, leading locals to speculate that the river might be cursed due to the number of lives it has claimed. The situation became so dire that tubing was banned in 2012, but it was later reopened with stricter regulations. Bars now operate under more controlled conditions, reducing excessive alcohol consumption and party music. Thanks to these changes, tubing sessions in Bang Bieng are now safer and less chaotic than before. Another intriguing site in Laos is the mysterious Plains of Jars. Located about 400 kilometers northeast of the capital, Vientiane, the Plains of Jars is the country's most remarkable megalithic site. Dating back around 2,500 years, the area is home to numerous large stone jars some reaching heights of up to three meters and widths of one meter. Some believe the jars were used as urns for prehistoric rituals conducted by people traveling between the Mekong River and the Gulf of Tonkin. Locals think these stone vessels were made to brew strong rice wine in celebration of the triumph of mythical giants residing in the mountains. Regardless of your beliefs in the supernatural, this mysterious site is definitely worth a visit when you're in Laos. While Laos is a conservative country, it surprisingly holds the title of the highest alcohol consumption in Southeast Asia. Some attribute this drinking culture to the locals' shy nature, which encourages them to loosen up. In Laos, drinking serves as a means of social bonding and enjoyment. There are some important drinking customs to be aware of if you're attending a party in Laos. Drinking is typically a communal activity, so you're expected to partake with everyone rather than alone. 
You should wait for the host to kick things off before drinking. The host will pour the first drink to honor the house spirit, followed by serving themselves and the guests. When you're drinking, it's considered impolite to keep the bottle to yourself. You should pass it to the person on your left. Moreover, during a Laotian party, you're expected to drink as much as possible, with local customs suggesting at least nine shots in a single gathering. Declining a drink can be seen as rude, so if you've had enough, you might need some clever tactics to avoid drinking more. You could pretend to drink while discreetly pouring out the shot when others are distracted or discreetly spit it out when no one is watching. It's essential to know your limits, especially since many alcoholic beverages in Laos are quite strong. For instance, the popular rice whiskey known as Lao Lao has an alcohol content of about 50% by volume. Imagine wandering through a city without the noise of traffic or the distraction of traffic lights. This is the luxury you can enjoy in Luang Prabang, the ancient capital where the Mekong River flows. It's a must-visit destination in the land of a million elephants, often referred to as the Land of Buddha. There's even a saying that goes, if you haven't been to Luang Prabang, you haven't visited our country. The city is recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which explains its well-preserved traditional character. In Luang Prabang, you won't encounter convenience stores, chain restaurants, or movie theaters. It's all about a slower pace of life. The city is also known as the City of Giving Way, as it has no traffic lights and prohibits car horns. When people are on the road, they don't honk at each other or push for right of way. Instead, if someone is in a hurry, they simply flash their lights at other drivers to signal for passage. The rules are simple. Flash once if you need to get by quickly, and flash twice in an emergency. Avoid continuous flashing or honking, as this will make you stand out as an outsider, and locals may reprimand you. If you find yourself interacting with local police in Laos, it's best not to argue and to comply with their instructions. It's common knowledge that the underpaid police force often looks for opportunities to extort money from tourists. It's highly unadvisable to resist or go to the police station to present your side of the story. The justice system in Laos can be quite biased, particularly against uninformed tourists. You may even notice police collaborating with women or drug dealers in bars. When their accomplices successfully lure you into a compromising situation, the police will swoop in and accuse you of a crime. So it's crucial to remain vigilant during your holiday in Laos and steer clear of risky situations. Unfortunately, violence against women is a global issue and Laos is no exception. In fact, violence against women is disturbingly prevalent in the country. A national survey found that approximately one in three women, whether married or in a relationship, reported experiencing some form of violence from their partners. The reality may be even more grim than the survey indicates. Shockingly, only one in five women who faced abuse sought help from local authorities. A mere 4% contacted the police, while only 3% reached out to health services. This reluctance is largely due to discriminatory attitudes towards women and the lack of adequate support services. The high incidence of such violence is fueled by distorted perceptions within the country. According to the Lao Social Indicator Survey, 16% of men believe that a husband's violence is justified if his wife fails to meet societal expectations. Alarmingly, about 30% of women concur with this view, highlighting the societal standing of women in Laos. Fortunately, Organizations like the Lao Women's Union are working to change the narrative. They focus on protecting women's rights and their right to live free from violence. This organization serves as a safe haven for women in Laos, offering shelter and support during difficult times. While strolling through any city in Laos, you'll likely notice an abundance of monks. However, there's an important rule to keep in mind. Never touch a monk in Laos. For men, it's considered disrespectful, and for women, it's taboo. This stems from the principles upheld in the Buddhist monastic community. To become a monk, a man must shave his head, abstain from smoking and alcohol, and practice celibacy. 
Monks in Laos are prohibited from sitting next to women or touching them. In fact, they cannot even touch anything a woman is currently holding. For instance, if you wish to show something to a monk, you should place it down first for him to pick up. You cannot hand them the item directly, especially if you are a woman. The only exception to this rule is when offering morning alms by placing food or money into the monk's bowl. One reason monks are so prevalent in Laos is related to the economy. When unemployed, men can become monks to receive food donations and have a place to live. Many young men from rural areas in Laos are sent to join the monkhood by their parents, allowing them to gain free education and support, which eases the financial burden on their families. Monks hold a place of great respect in Laos as they lead religious ceremonies and offer guidance to the community. While Laos is generally a safe country, it's crucial not to venture into remote areas without a tour guide. Solo travelers are better off sticking to popular destinations like Luang Prabang or Vientiane. Beyond these two cities, it's advisable to seek the assistance of a local guide. Communication can be challenging in these areas, with few people speaking English or being able to understand you. This can lead to misunderstandings and detract from your holiday experience. Additionally, there's a notable risk of traffic accidents. The driving styles of motorbike and tuk-tuk operators differ significantly from what you may be used to in the West. So it's wise to use reputable transportation services or ask your guide to arrange one for you. Local law enforcement can also present challenges. Without caution, you may become vulnerable to scams and extortion. Having a local guide can provide an extra layer of protection and help you avoid dangerous situations. Finally, travelers should absolutely avoid hiking or walking in northern Laos. This is due to the presence of unexploded mines, which cover about 30% of the country and could cause serious injuries or even fatalities if encountered. If Beneath Laos' serene exterior lies a web of complex stories and hidden dangers. While the country enchants visitors with its beauty, it's important for travelers to navigate its nuances with awareness and respect.